Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Wells. How many of you here got socked in at home? Well, how come you're here? <laughs> now, uh, this, I guess, like most people that come up here, you always wonder what you're going to say. And uh, I've been thinking of things, and I got to looking at the newspaper this morning, and uh, something just jumped out at me. I hope we don't have anybody here that's a member of the NRA. Anybody here a member of NRA? <laughs> Are you? Well, you can leave. You no, know, I don't think this will be uh, too political. But uh, anyway, I got to looking at the newspaper and uh, at an ad. And uh, it was an ad for a T-shirt made, made by Smith & Wesson, the T-shirt. And it had the words respect written on the back. And it had two guns below the word respect. And I, it made me think about, um, among other things, you know, this, the matter of why people uh, do things like the person in Fort Lauderdale. You know, they, everybody, why do they do this? And then you have these astute reporters that ask the politicians, well, is this preventable? Well, no, it's not. I mean, it's going to happen. Maybe you can cut down on some of it. But I got thinking about the word respect and um, how often things like this happen because people have grown up being disrespected. And, um, you know, of course, the Bible teaches about love our neighbor as ourselves, and, which in so many words it means respect each other, like... Uh, Sister Aretha would have said, respect yourself. But I remember years ago reading about uh, the penal system in Norway. And in Norway, and come to find out in other uh, Scandinavian countries, they can, their, one of their philosophies is that so many of the people who ends up, end up in jail and penal system is because of lack of respect. And, um, you know, here we have a prominent gun manufacturers suggesting that guns are going to uh, teach people respect. Now, y'all may have different views than I do, but I'm not sure that's going to work. But anyway, I got to, I googled Norway and respect. And this is something that I never knew of. And come to find out, it was, uh, they were talking about what's called the, the law of Jante, J-A-N-T-E. And it has to do with a, a person that had, uh, a poet in, in Norway. And among other things, in whatever he'd written, he had 10 rules. And some of these, obviously, you're not going to agree with. I'm not sure I understand them. The first one is, and look at these somewhat like you would the 10 commandments or the eight commandments. Excuse me, 10, there's 10. Uh, you're not to think you're anything special. Of course, I, it makes me think about, uh, for those of you that remember the, the church lady, uh, you're so special. Um, you know, how many of us were taught that we were special? And of course, to our parents and to some other people we were. Another one, you're not to think you're as good as we are. Humility, perhaps. You're not to think you're smarter than we are. You're not to convince yourself that you are better than we are. You're not to think you know more than we do. You're not to think you are more important than we are. You're not to laugh at us. Uh, you're not to think you can teach us anything. How many of us, I know I do, you know, you always want to be right. And you always want to convey the attitude, well, I can teach you. Um, but it, anyway, it made me think about, like I said, our society and what we've become in terms of uh, thinking we're better than the other person, disrespecting the other person for whatever reason, whether it be uh, disrespect for because of income, because of position, because of education, or whatever. 
and, and it gets back to, to me, to things like our Tuesday ministry. It's not just the food that you hand out. It's not necessarily what you do for the people, but it's the fact that I think it's teaching these people, uh, or excuse me, it's conveying to these people that we respect them. And that uh, we're here to respect them and, and to help them respect themselves better. And I think that's the perhaps the most important thing in my mind as far as the uh, ministries that this church has. And now we'll have the call to worship wherever James is. I don't guess James is here. He's not here. We're doing it without him. I'm here. Yeah, we're okay. we got this. We got it. We're James has got bronchitis. We're on our own today. Okay. Yeah. Well, who's the leader? Me. Oh. <laughs> All right. Little James, you go ahead. <laughs> go sit down, brother. We got this. <laughs> who will ride far and oh I'm looking well I was given the 830 can we do both yeah. right. baptized to begin lives of faith we would witness to all you do in our communities in our midst in our world Baptized to serve, we would speak up for the voiceless. We would bring justice to those who have none. Most well, gracious God, God, we are baptized to speak. We would heal and not hurt. We would bless and not curse. Let's treat each other as your blood. Amen. If you would remain standing, turn to hymn number 57. <coughs> And we'll sing verses 1, 3, 5, and 7.
do, if you choose to do it, if you want. It's the way we do things here at Wells. But if you do choose to, then follow along with me as we affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, escaped convicts are walking down this country road and they see this surreal sight of these people dressed in white and they're, they're singing this song and it's almost supernatural as they leave the road they walk through the woods and they head to this river and as they get to the river two of the escaped convicts run and jump in behind these people that are filing into the river to be baptized and one guy, one of the ex-cons, comes up out of the water and he says, The minister says all my sins are forgiven. Praise God. Amen. Even the sin that I had when I stole that pig. I thought you didn't do that, one of the convicts said. I lied. And he's forgiven me of that too. Amen. <laughs> and that character shows a change of who he is. After his two buddies steal a pie, he puts some money where the pie was. There's something about your baptism. Now, I know I'm talking to mostly Methodists here. And those of us that are recovering Baptists, we know what it is to be submerged and raised up in the newness of Christ. It's one of my favorite things to do as a Baptist pastor. Matter of fact, a couple weeks ago, a buddy of mine put uh, a video of when we baptized his son. And his son was a, a not a very tall kid for his age and you couldn't really see him once he was baptized but I picked him up and held him right here you know and there's something about that baptism John Wesley believed that an infant baptized they couldn't say no right but it also was a, a claim of the parents that when that child is baptized this is the way we're going to raise our child and the church joined in and said, this is what we're going to do. So baptism can be a tricky thing. And I've often wondered why Jesus had to be baptized. I'll tell you about that more later. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for the chance to gather in this place. We thank you for our baptism. Though they may be different, whether sprinkled or submerged, it's only the last few drops that really count. So as we pause at this place in the service, we are reminded of our Savior and of Him going down to the river to be baptized. We thank you for the example that he set not only in his baptism, but in his life. And we remember him as we remember all of God's creation. As we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. 
with you. And also with you. Thanks, y'all. If you would stand, we will sing him 254, and instead of all the verses, be verses 1, 3, and 5. <laughs> the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon to skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And, and in his temple all cry, Lord. The Lord, is, the Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as ruler forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May, May the Lord bless his people with peace. other with the peace and love of Christ.
check, check. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We're all mic'd up this morning, ready to go. Thank you for coming here today. Let's take a couple of moments. We're going to look at the life of our church. We're going to look at the inside cover of your bulletin. Our altar flowers this morning were provided by Kevin Newman to the glory of God in celebration of Steve Greeno's birthday, the 10th of January. The Tonkel and Brazier families want to thank you and extend their love for um, the many gifts you've given them over the year and especially around the Christmas time. Thank you so much for that. And as we as a church look ahead to this coming year, we, we look forward to the continuation of our ministries in the neighborhood and beyond. We look forward to our ministries to each other and we look forward to improving um, the infrastructure to do that with in our fellowship hall. So um, there, we, we have a um, uh, 90 and 90 is what we're calling it, a fun drive to uh, renovate our kitchen. Uh, we're going to live within our means and not uh, build beyond the money that we have. And um, the money that we use to build will not um, be substituted for any of the other um, money we need to carry on the ministries of the church. So please consider giving to that. There's a flyer in your bulletin about the Mission Mississippi Prayer Breakfast. Um, this coming week, this Thursday, which is the, um, not this Thursday, it's a week from Thursday, the 19th, um, it will be here at Wells. Um, it starts at 6.45 in the morning, goes on for an hour. Um, Mission Mississippi has been working uh, in our state and in our city for many, many, year, many, many years now to help promote racial reconciliation. And, um, so coming here to that breakfast would be a good thing to do if you're able to do it. Along those same lines, um, on Saturday, um, that would be Saturday the 14th, I think, um, Dr. Martin, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Parade will be held. Um, Wells participates in that each year and will do so again this year if you um, plan to march in that parade, please meet here at the church at 8.15. You leave promptly at 8.30 to go to um, Brinkley Middle School um, to assemble the parade, which will take a little while. Uh, <laughs> um, coming up uh, next Sunday, the 15th, There'll be a time of blessing for the uh, leadership team for this church for 2017. If you are in uh, a member of that leadership team, please plan to come to one of the services next Sunday to do that. And there'll be a retreat later on that coincides with a council and ministries and administrative board meeting um, associated with the new leaders. Are there any other announcements this morning? John. I've got kind of a sad announcement. Um, Nick and Joan Ayers, who are a big part of this church and who have uh, helped me with a lot of things uh, since I came here almost three years ago, they are being kidnapped and taken to Florida by their son. <laughs> um, and we will miss them extremely. Uh, they, they move Tuesday. And so I just want to say, uh, though y'all may be absent in body, Any other announcements? Yes. Tuesday morning programs. Uh, we are very low on vegetables. Uh, we need some vegetables. If you would like to purchase some, Kroger's has a big sale going on there right now. And if y'all do not want to go to Kroger's, I have no problem going to Kroger myself. I love going shopping. So if you'd like to get a little extra money just for Kroger's. Thank you. 
Thank you, Anthony. We're going to have a time for prayer requests in just a moment, but first we're going to have um, a prayer of healing for Catherine Dollarhide. Catherine, if you come to the altar. Blessed be the time that I am. Let's all take just a moment and pray together, please. Our Father, even when we don't get the right key, we thank you for doing the right thing and for extending love to someone that we love that loves us, someone that we want to serve, that has served us well and long. We pray that as Catherine goes tomorrow for this testing and looks forward to the outcome, that the intervention of your Holy Spirit might make it very good news for us and very good news for her. So please hear our prayer as together we share it as one part of your people. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. You are present in this place. You are present in this place. Join us now in this prayer. Join us now in this prayer. For healing and health. For healing and health. For this your daughter and our sister. For this your daughter and our sister. And we offer our prayer. And we offer our prayer. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Does anyone have any prayer requests they would like to mention out loud this morning? Yes. Okay, Bill's sister. Deb? Um, a colleague of mine, Harold Henderson, is very ill after a bone marrow transplant and I to lift him up. Okay, pray for Harold. Yes. Thanksgiving, I talked with Bob Caskey last night. He underwent uh, his fourth endoscopy, therapeutic endoscopy, and uh, he's eating a lot better. He sounded better last night than he sounded in several months. I still have a lot of pain in his neck. Um, he goes in the 23rd to Mississippi Sports Medicine to see what can be done about alleviating that pain. So please keep him in your prayers. Okay. Yes, BJ. Uh, My husband's back in this congregation. thankful that we can come to you this morning out loud without fear together we lift up to you Lord both our thanksgivings which are many and our needs and hopes 
which are also many. Lord, people who love others have named their names and lifted them up. We pray that they would experience your presence with them. We pray for those who have silent needs and hopes that they too would experience your presence. We pray, Lord, for those whose needs we don't know because they're hidden or we don't know them. We pray for those who aren't free, who don't know where their next meal will come, who are afraid, who must keep their faith secret, who lack hope. And because you command us, Lord, despite the fact that it goes against our grain, we pray for those who are cruel, we pray for those who hate. We pray for those who make other people suffer. We know that you are, and you alone are able to change hearts, and that's what we pray for for them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 How about birthdays and anniversaries? Yes? Yes. Freddie will be celebrating double nipple on Wednesday. Okay. Wow. That's good. Mom? Jeff and Debbie are celebrating their 38th wedding anniversary. Okay. Oh. Would you like a prayer at the altar? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> yes. Got everybody? Yeah. Jeff. Okay. Will you come to the altar also? Okay. My nephew celebrated one year sobriety January third. Deb reminded me yesterday that um, when we come to the altar for our anniversaries. Bruce and Trina Reynolds always came also because their anniversaries came at the same time and we feel their, it hurts that they're not here today. Anyone else have a birthday anniversary? John, you want to start? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God, thank you for a church where we have a little time that we set aside to do special things for people celebrating life events. And we thank you for the chance to come one more time to this altar and to open it at all times for two different families, 38 years, 24 years of life and love shared. We thank you for the chance that is ours to offer our blessings and our peace to them in your name. Hear our prayer. Holy Spirit of God, we give thanks to you for these two couples and their life celebration of their love shared. We pray for the best things for them and they they love and those they love in time to come. In the name of Jesus, we offer it. Amen.
Anthony told me to tell you that Bruce and Trina, 42 years. If the ushers would come forward to receive the offering, please. Thank you for the chance to give offerings and tithes. May we be like that one in the song that didn't really have anything to give, and so he gave his heart. We give you our hearts today, and we ask that you would bless them. In the name of Christ, amen.
She didn't get that from you, brother. <laughs> she got her looks from you. <laughs> Love you, Jamie. Uh, if you would, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, and this is taken from the message. Jesus then appeared, arriving at the Jordan River from Galilee. He wanted John to baptize him. John objected. I'm the one who needs to be baptized, not you. But Jesus insisted, do it. God's work, putting things right all these centuries, is coming together right now in this baptism. So John did it. The moment Jesus came up out of the baptismal waters, the sky opened up, and he saw God's Spirit. It looked like a dove descending and landing on him, and along with the Spirit, a voice. This is my Son, chosen and marked by my love, delight of my life. The Gospel of our Lord for the people of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I've talked about this passage of scripture for many days, many times as a paid Christian. How do we make a difference? How do we make a difference? It's an age-old question. Why was Jesus, who just came from heaven some 30 years earlier, why did he have to be baptized? Now maybe I'm wrong, but the emphasis on his baptism doesn't really get as much attention as his birth, does it? And I really don't know why that is. But our faith stretches back into history like the roots of a mighty oak tree stretching its roots to the ground and toward the river. But our faith is not just a history lesson. It's not enough to say, this is what we've always done, so we're going to continue to do it that way. No, no. This is what God did a long time ago, yes. In some churches, people dress up in their bathrobes and sandals in the Christmas pageants. But eventually, the robes have to come off. You see, this simple story of Jesus' baptism by John contrasts the humility of the two. Jesus had fully accepted what John was doing in his ministry. But John 
thinking Jesus should baptize him. It's a different thing, right? So John goes ahead and does what Jesus has come to do. And then whether it was just Jesus, some theologians think that the Spirit came down and only Jesus saw that and only Jesus heard the voice. I don't know. I can't say for sure one way or the other. But I do know that when Jesus came up out of the water, God's Spirit said, this is it. This is my son. And you would do well to do as he did. It may be interpreted best that Jesus, this was his ordination for his ministry. And our faith isn't just an exercise in the past, even though some people pretend like it is. And, you know, you have the folks that come to church two times a year at Christmas and Easter. You know, that's all they think about. But the things that God did in the past point toward what God is doing now that was the future but is in present tense. The former things have come to pass and we should celebrate them. We should know them. We should teach those things. Most of all, we should savor those things. Isaiah says it's like a fresh shoot bursting forth out of the ground that God is doing new things. And one of the things that I felt this week as I, as I looked at the scripture and thought about this morning, our faith didn't just happen. It wasn't a time when you really felt God's spirit. You know, I was 17. I was at Gulf Shores Baptist Assembly and I had been a Christian since I was 10 years old and attended church probably more than I should have if you can do that. Because my parents made me, you know. My brother's mentally handicapped. They didn't have a place for him, so my parents rotated. When I got my driver's license, I wanted to know why I couldn't be in on the rotation. You know, well, y'all skip every other week. How about me? No, you had to go. But trying to find a place where that faith that I had had and had been taught about became my own. I met a lady on that trip, a young woman. She's sitting in the back right there. And we were kind of liking one another. You know how that goes? Check yes or no, George Strait says. Um, and we were walking on the beach. And I remember reaching down and holding her hand. And it scared me to death. Because somewhere in my being, I knew that that was the person I was going to marry. And I think she was scared too. <laughs> but not for the same reason. <laughs> But our faith doesn't just happen. It's not like you're just, boom, there it is. Your faith is a continual thing. It happens. It happens every day. John the Baptist took the people of Israel out into the wilderness to the River Jordan. Believe it or not, it's the same place where the Israelites stopped when the exodus ended. They crossed into the Promised Land a millennium and a half earlier, 1,500 years. There's symbolism in that river. There's something about the promised land that we feel in the baptism of Christ. But John wasn't there just for a history lesson. He was there to declare the new thing that God was doing in Christ. So in those waters of new life and liberty, God still sets people free. It's still liberating. When I was in the Baptist church, we would baptize people. We would bury them in the waters, just like Jesus was buried, but raise them to walk in a newness of life, the way Christ wants you to live. The story is that John the Baptist's resistance to the realization of baptism, we would all say that, right? If we knew who Jesus was and knew where he had come from, we would say, uh-uh, man, I'm not baptizing you. You need to baptize me. So it's natural for what John the Baptist did. Jesus did not need to be baptized. And yet for you and me and for his heavenly father, he emptied himself of all that he was and became fully human and was baptized. Jesus emerged out of the waters 
in a way that God said, this is it. This is your time. And I think God says the same thing to us every morning when you put your feet on the floor and you set forth about your day. Just as Jamie's saying, every morning is a new day for a new life. You get to start over. If you messed up yesterday, it's behind you. You can't do anything about it. I'm trying to keep a journal this year of all my wonderful spiritual things that God has revealed to me. The pages are blank so far. But they're still there to be written in. What is God doing in you? Is it a new thing? Is it new things? A realized baptism was and always a powerful revealing event. It's a personal confirmation. It's a validation, an affirmation. And hopefully at some point it dawns on all of us that God really does love us. Maybe it's today. I don't know. But when you and I stop leaning against the powerful pillars of buildings made with human hands and we start relying on the everlasting arms of God more than people, your life will change. I promise you. Her name was Betty. And when she wrote me notes or sent me emails, she would always say, fondly, Betty. She said, I've been forced to go on a journey I don't want to take. She told me that. She had a terrible cancer and was in the last few days of her life. And yet she said, this is the worst of my times, but it's also been the best of my times. She said, I'm closer to God than I've ever been because so many of the things that I leaned on in this life have been taken away from me. I have been forced to lean on Jesus. And I have found him to be trustworthy and true. That's a baptism made real. By God's grace, may it be so for you and yours. Amen. Amen. If you would like to take part in communion, the sacraments have been um, consecrated and personalized and made ready for your partaking of them. We'll take it in the back, uh, and Don will be there to serve you. If you will, stand now as we sing. Number 617, verse 1 of Come With Joy. Thank you so much. I invite you to join hands as we sing our benediction. <clears throat>